Okay, um, in our last topic, you realized uh, we identified various hazards and risks at workplace. No, we identified various hazards and risks at workplace. No, we looked at uh, the types of hazards that you can have at workplace, the physical hazards, the bionomical hazards. So we looked at all of those. Yes? Uh, what are the types of hazards did we look at? We had physical hazards, biological hazards. The other one was? Chemical hazards, uh huh. Any other? Agronomical hazards, uh huh. Another one? There were, more, there were at least six. Yes? You've already talked about biological hazards. What about any other? Don't you have them in your notes? Okay, so after identifying various types of risks, we also looked at indicators of those risks. In your we talked about how you are going to know that they are, they are risks. And how do you discover they are risks? Increased absence of people at work. At work. So that's the one of them. What else did we talk about? Yes? Common? Complaints among the workers. Uh -huh. Increased accident and injuries. Increased accident and injuries. Any other item we talked about? That will help you indicate or will act as an indicator. Any other? Yo. So, uh, in topic two, we are going to look at the main objective we are going to look at identifying the implementing and implementing appropriate measures to those hazards and risks. So, yes, you have noticed there's a hazard. How do you deal with it? That's our. The learning outcome focuses on addressing prevention and control measures to hazards, including use of PPE. We talked about PPE, right? That is protective personal, protective, personal protective equipment. Tasking appropriate controls as well as contingency measures, recognized and reestablished in accordance with workplace proce procedure. So we're going to look at those things that you employ in order to cope with hazards and risks, but only those that are appropriate to workplace to workplaces. Uh, but before we dive in, we are going to define the following terms. That is the first term we're going to define is hazard prevention and Hazard prevention and control. So, hazard prevention, we already know what a hazard is, yes? Do you know what prevention is? Prevention? Okay, listen to this. Hazard prevention and control, these are efforts geared towards protecting workers from workplace hazards. These are efforts geared towards protecting workers from the workplace hazards. That is, help avoid injuries, illness, incidents, minimize and eliminate safety and health risks, help provide workers with safety and helpful working conditions. So basically, these are measures that you put in place. For instance, if you're working in a construction site, you need people to wear what? Protective gear. Protective gear. That includes what? A helmet, a refractor, what else? Safety boots, gloves, anything else they can wear? If they are working in uh, welding and in um, uh, chum and anything, they are supposed to also wear goggles. Those are the preventive measures that you have to take. The other item you are going to define is personal protective equipment. Personal protective equipment. Known as? P P E. It is one of the important means to protect the wearer from hazards in workplaces. It is first frontier of the wearer from workplace worksite hazards and should be selected based on job scope and intended protection. So PPE are not just anything you find anywhere. They are defined by the job, by the job. 
Each job or each workplace have its own special kit of P PPE. Like in ICT, what do you have as PPEs? What do you have as PPEs? Personal protective equipment. Yes? Goggles. For what? You, you, you can minimize the light on your, on your screen. <laughs> yeah, you, you can minimize the light. Huh? Or maximize. So what do you need in ICT? Naked wires. Do you handle them with bare hands? When you are touching the hardware. So you may need some groups, isn't you? You may need some groups. So that is one of the PPEs. Okay, as we go on, we'll be looking at various examples of PPEs that you may need in your, in your field or life. Those ones. Uh, preventive and control measures for specific hazard identified and implemented. Preventive and control measures for specific hazard identified and implemented. So the first one we have said is use of PPE. So you can use PPE to control and identify hazards. If you realize that when you hold an iron rod, it's burning you because one of the end is on the, is on fire. What do you do? How do you hold it? You can use glove, gloves to hold the, the iron. If you realize that if you uh, when you're handling mabati, the iron sheets, they are going to injure you. You wear glo gloves. When you're going to do farming and the sand is burning your, your feet or you're feeling itchy, what do you do? You wear? You wear gumboots. When you're working on the fields and you don't want to get your clothes dirty, what do you wear? Yes? Do you wear a mask? Oh, overall. What about when you are ugly and you want to hide your face? Corona gave us a solution, isn't it? Huh? <laughs> COVID-19 gave us a solution. Ah, oh, okay, I'm going to go to makeup. They are wearing masks. And you know, this is the time you discover yourself. You realize, my life is extended. So, you know, college is when you start uh, discovering yourself. Oh, I can talk. <laughs> you realize I can even do one. I can do one. I'm a, Wengine wanafanya mpaka 200. Inapita wanaite kidogo. So, this is time you realize it. Ukivalia makeup, inaleta shi? Inaleta shi do. So, wanaenda wananya wa izi. Arafu wananunua rangi. Asukui, ta, ta. Aiswa, aki, aki akatoka mila yu kitu. <laughs> Unonawa kama forehead imefika hapa. And we have the, they even have the artificial ones. But I say when I cut an artificial ones, it's only PPE. What's on a protective equipment? Because if you put a pillow, you're a zombie. When I when I cut, I say, see, you are putting artificial ones black. Zina zina kwa mrefu. And then when I cut, kaleka you. Did you play with the kind of ka, kanini? Ka, kadoli, kido, kaliko, kadonolo, ka plastic? Can you get to anisha mugu, utoe, utoe mukono, alafu kabaki ibo? You, you played with that? So, unakaka kwa kadoli. Uki umevalia hizo. You know, hizo mili ukivalia zina kuwanga ibo. <laughs> huh? Nyele, of course, umeshuka to light, alafu umedungilishu ingine ibo. Eh, ili kwe? Exactly, come up and only. Anyway, it happens. So, use of PPE. P -P. The other one is use of elimination. Eliminate? Elimination. And we talked about elimination as well. I gave you an example with a potato full of, a sack full of potato. And one of the potatoes is this, defective. So, what do you do? That potato that is defective, that's a, that's a hazard. It is going to affect the other, isn't it? And as a matter of fact, you, uh, the moment you have one potato and very defective, so what do you do? You eliminate that potato that is defective. And by eliminating, you, are remo you remove it from the sun. 
to remain with the good pot potato. So eliminate it. Uh, we have another one called substitution. In ile unifanyiwa jana. Si jana kulikuwa pale nde. Eh ile yenye unifanyiwa. Unifanyiwa hiyo pia. Oh boy ana ruka pana. So in the substitution yenye unifanyiwa jana. In this one we all understand, si ndio? Aliangalia kaona wewe eh wewe uwezi score. Wewe hata maua bado una complaint nyingi na nchi ya that Bob Nice Pop ya 10. Mauwe ya fiu ya yeso mbili ya soda tutarunua. Haka chukua ingine, haka eka. Una shindu, anapambia. Hakiwa hostel simi yake ingi yangi. Ulezebiwa. So this is why you remove the defective item or the item that has a hazard or the hazardous equipment. You remove it. From there, either the machine. If it's a machine, maybe you're operating. You have a mo you have a mobile phone, Sindio. So you operate mobile phone. You guys will be operating gadgets in ICT, Sindio. So what kind of what what items uh, can they can they be hazardous in the machines? For instance, you can have a defective hard disk, Sindio. It's hazardous, Sindio. So what do you do? You open the machine, you remove the hard disk, and then you replace it with another. With another. So basically, you substitute. If you realize your computer is slow, what do you do? What do you do? Do you? Do you print? Yes? Update what? If you update the system, does not mean the computer will be fast. Oh, to trust you, it won't be fast. What gives the computer speed? RAM. So what do you do if your computer is slow? You swap the RAM. You can be having window, uh, window XP. You swap it to window 10 and your computer still will behave the same way. Speed is the same. Because speed is enhanced by the hardware com component, not the software component. Yes, window XP is the ancient. It does not even support some programs. Window 10 will support a lot of programs. There has a lot of features. But again, when it comes to speed, it is not the OS that will determine the speed of your computer. It is the RAM. So, if you realize your computer is slow, you swap the RAM. And by swapping, you're doing what? Substituting the, the components of the parts that you, you feel like it's causing. It's hazard. It's hazardous to your computer. Uh -huh. What else can you replace in a computer? Defective keyboards. A keyboard and you want to type J in a type X. You have seen such a keyboard? Hey, what's that your phones, your mobile phones work at a crack screen? What happens? Unandika S in Andika Y. You click Y, but you click S in Andika Z. Have you ever had such an experience? Unakasrika unayikongesha chini. You go back to Kadunde. So, uh, in a smartphone, you realize if it's behaving that way, it means that what is wrong? The screen. The screen. That is substitution. We have isolation. Isolation. Iso? Isolation. Isolation is where you isolate, where you keep one aside. Sasa? Where you pick one and you put it aside. It's like, uh, a good example I can give you is like, in criminals, criminals. You realize here in this class, you may have a criminal, isn't it? Uh, that guy is hazardous, isn't it? Because of his criminal activities, isn't it? See, criminal is a hazardous behavior. So what happens when, <laughs> so you, you, uh, that criminal you have, uh, you need to control him, isn't it? You need to prevent him from infecting other people, all from, his bad habits affecting the, pe the people. So what do you do? You isolate the crime. You take the criminal from the class. You put him in a juvenile or in a prison. And you have isolated the criminal from the good. From the good ones. Sasawa. Isolation. Mm -hmm. What else can you do when you're sorting data? When you're sorting data, and then you notice there is a file that is defective in your computer, a file that is hazardous to your materials, what do you do? 
you isolate the file. You save the file separate. Sendio, to avoid the file from corrupting the other files. You can even make sure there is a system that is detached from the main system. That is where you are going to put the corrupt file. The corrupted file. It is also the work of uh, antivirus. When you, when you give the antivirus, when you run your computer, you do a full diagnostic of your computer. What does the antivirus do? It looks at all the files, it detects the, hazard, the, the, the files that are defective or the hazard ones, and then it brings you the, the hazard ones. And then the antivirus will ask you whether you want to fix them all daily. That is, that is isolation. We have engineering control and administrative control. So we're going to look at engineering control. So when you talk about engineering control as a measure, you're talking about, for instance, uh, you realize this room, this classroom that we have is an engineering design. That computer lab that you'll be working on is a, an engineering design. If you realize you're getting fatigued or there's no enough air circulation in that room, what do you do? You change the design. The design. Senior. Through engineering. Through engineering. This is why you add ventilation tubes. Uh, sorry, ventilation uh, panels and windows. What else can you add? Hmm? You can bring an air conditioner. What else can you do? If you realize your room, your, your computer lab is prone to theft, how do you handle that one? You back the roof? The room. You add alarm systems to the room, to the room and so forth. Okay. So on administrative control, we are basically talking about as an administrator, as the manager, as the supervisor, as the director, the measures we are taking towards trying to control risks and, ha and hazards. And how do you do that? You make sure that if you have systems that are hazardous, you minimize the expo. Expose. You, pe you put in place measures and policies that minimize expo, expo as an administrator, administrative control. So if you're the principal of this school and you realize that if students go to the lower field, there is a risk, potential risks, or if when employees goes to the field, there is a hazard there. What do you do? You put a policy in place. A, B, C, D, you're not supposed to go to the field, to the lower field, because of one, two, three, three. And if you have to go to the field, you must have A, B, C, a, B, C, D. And then you have controlled the, the hazard in the field. 